Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today's part five of my students and parents video series. What does that mean? Well, go watch parts one through four if you haven't already. Today, we're going to work on some reporting. We're going to make a nice call sheet. So we've got all of our parents listed next to the students that they belong to. So if you got to call little Scotty Scott and... <laughs> Say, hey, mom, you got to come pick up your kid. He's sick. Well, it's easy to find him on the call list. All right. All right, here we go. Well, the first thing we got to do is put some phone numbers in here. Now, I'm going to assume that you don't want to call the students, even though nowadays even elementary kids have cell phones, which blows my mind. But let's go to the parent table. Let's design this guy. And let's put a phone number in here. I like to keep phone numbers as short text, not as numbers. Lots of reasons why I talk about them all. In my Access Beginner 1 class, basically, if you're ever going to do math on it, then it can be a number. If not, it should be text. Okay? All right. Save that. Close it. Let's put some data in here. Let's just uh, put a bunch of numbers in. Doesn't matter what. Yeah, I know. I'm typing in seven-digit numbers. I'm old. And we're going to put one more parent in here. We're going to call him... Uh, Let's just put Malcolm Reynolds in here. All right, whatever. And we're going to make sure he doesn't have any students associated with him. And you'll see why in just a minute. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to put a student in here. Let's put in here Billy Williams. And we're going to make sure he doesn't have a parent associated with him. Okay, now. In case of an emergency, I want to be able to have a list of all my students alphabetical, and I want to be able to see all of their contacts, all their parents associated with them. So that screams query. Let's make a query. Query design. Don't need this property sheet. Let's bring in the student table. Now, the only way to get from the students to the parents is you have to go through the junction table. So bring in this guy. Notice it makes the relationship for us automatically. And then bring in the parent table. That's how you can relate a student to a parent and vice versa. Now I'm gonna bring in just the fields that I might wanna have on the report. So student ID, first name, last name, don't need anything from the junction table. Let's bring in the parent, first name, last name, and phone number. Don't think I'll need the parent ID. The student ID might be handy because students do have IDs and sometimes if you got two Bill Smiths in your school, you might need to know which one it is, right? So the ID can be handy. You can add your own student code, whatever you want. I got whole separate videos on doing that. Now, if I run this right now, there's everybody, but you're going to note that there's somebody missing, right? Remember, I added in Billy Williams, okay? Billy Williams isn't showing up in my student list, okay? Why is that? Well, that's because these are inner joins which means you have to have a matching record in all three tables for the data to show up there. If you want to see all students, whether or not they have an associated parent, then you have to set this up as outer joints. I got a whole separate video on this topic if you want to learn more about this. But essentially, we're going to double click on the join line right there. And we're going to say, see, normally it says only include rows where the join fields from both tables are equal. I want to click on this one, include all records from student T and the records from the junction table where the join fields are equal. So I want to see all of the students, whether or not they have a matching record in this table. Now, that's not enough, because watch, if I run this now, I get an error message. It says the SQL statement could not be executed because it contains ambiguous outer joins. To force one of the joins to be performed first, create a separate query that performs the first join that include that query in your SQL statement. Now, what that's saying is, is it basically wants you to make a query out of this first, then perform this join in another query. Or, or you could just get rid of the ambigu ambigu ambiguity, I can't talk today, by making this one an outer join as well. So if you got one outer join in here, you got to make them both outer joins. Okay, now if I run it, it works, and there's Billy Williams. Now, we're still not seeing Malcolm Reynolds, but that's okay because 
for this particular query, we wanted to see all of the students and their matching parents. If you want to see all of the parents, even if they don't have students, you got to go the other way. That's where you'd flip these arrows. Then you'll see all of the parents and the students that match them. But for this one, I want a list of the students. And now I can see, oh, well, hey, we don't have Billy Williams as parent contact info. It's maybe you know, important to figure that stuff out, right? <laughs> got, a, got a kid in our school and we don't know where he belongs. Uh, that's not a good thing. All right. But now we have all of the information that we need to make our phone list. Now, you might be looking at these names here, and you might be seeing that there's student t dot first name, student t dot last name, parent t dot first name, parent t dot last name. Yeah, honestly, at this point, you could join these into a calculated field to put first name and last name together, which I normally would do. But I want to save this because I want to show you one of my particular pet peeves that I get that I see all the time when we get to reports, and this drives my students crazy. And I will show this to you when we build the report. So I'm going to leave it like it is. But yes, I personally would join these together in first name and last name in here. But we're going to leave it because I like to I like to sometimes do things broken so I can show you the fix. Because if I run into it and lots of my students run into it, chances are you might run into it too. All right, let's save this bad boy. We're going to call this the student parent phone queue. And now we're ready to make our report, which we will get to in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to record it in just a few minutes. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. Oops, wrong slide. There we go. Part five. That's the, that's the one for the whole series. Part five. That's part five. That's part five, folks. Yeah, I'm still getting over this cold. I know. I need more cough syrup. Um, but that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part six. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check them out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course 
So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject, and I cover Lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.